Hello, how's it going, my friend? Hello, Sean. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, you're looking crisp and you're sounding clear. And I just great sorry to the viewers. Um, do you want to just add a little bit about you, perhaps? Uh, my name is Tony Ortega. I'm the editor of The Underground Bunker, which is my website, TonyOrtega.org, where we have a story every day at 7 a.m. Eastern about the Church of Scientology. I think I'm the only journalist who covers Scientology as a daily beat all year round. I've been writing about Scientology since 1995. I was the editor-in-chief of the Village Voice from 2007 to 2012. And are you getting any blowback from doing this from the church? Well, I mean, that's just part of their, you know, method is they try to make life hard for me and they're constantly smearing me online and they run various operations against me. It just kind of comes with the territory, I guess. What made you want to go in so hardcore on them? Well, look, it's a great story. I mean, <laughs> that's it. I mean, I, I was a young journalist back in 95. I bumped into a story that involves Scientology. I was just fascinated by it and made some great sources and, uh, you know, it's it's this not very large organization. It's smaller than people think, but it's got some famous celebrities. It's very secretive about what it does. And it's, you know, known for just some really amazing abuses and controversies. And it's endless. I mean, one of the things that's fascinating about it is that they, they are following a playbook that the founder laid down decades ago, and they really can't change the way that they do business. So... I, I just find that it's a fascinating story. I'm grateful that I have a front row seat to watch it develop. And that's it. I'm a journalist covering a story to me. That's all I'm doing. All right. Let's go over to Danny Masterson then. What is his story? Because I know we've done a lot on Tom Cruise and we've done a lot on John Travolta on the channel. What's Danny's story? Yeah, I mean, this is a big this is a bad time for the church. They're really facing a difficult period. Danny grew up in Scientology. He's known for playing Hyde on that 70s show. Uh, and he also had a show called The Ranch on Netflix. A uh, fairly well-known actor from a Scientology family. And I broke the story in 2017 that three women were talking to the LAPD with the, about their allegations that he had raped them when they were Scientologists. Uh, that turned into actual criminal charges last year. Danny has now gone through a preliminary hearing and his trial has been tentatively scheduled for February. If he's convicted, he's being prosecuted under a strict California one strike law. If he's convicted, he's looking at 45 years to life in prison for forcibly raping these three different women. Uh, it's a very serious case. But what was really interesting was how much was Scientology going to be involved? Because, I mean, he's a Scientology celebrity. They, the three women were Scientologists at that time. When they say they were attacked, they're not now. Um, a big question going into the preliminary hearing in May was how much the judge was going to allow testimony about Scientology. Because the women... Uh, their testimony is they didn't come forward sooner because they feared the church. They feared retaliation from the Church of Scientology. Now, Danny's attorneys wanted to keep that out of the case. But I have to tell you, Sean, I was sitting there in the front row for all four days in a courtroom in Los Angeles, and I was stunned at how much this judge had done her homework. And she understood what was going on. She allowed the testimony about Scientology's policies it was a nightmare for the Church of Scientology, and it's going to get worse when the criminal trial comes around because now we're talking February, maybe later, maybe more like May or June, but we're talking weeks of testimony with witnesses who were Scientologists or former Scientologists, and the judge has already established that Scientology will be a subject of that testimony. So the church is in a bad position because they're not a party. This isn't a civil suit. It's a criminal prosecution, and the church can't object the church can't even have a you know an attorney say anything so it's i and i also think besides how much of a nightmare this trial is going to be for scientology because of testimony i think there are other agencies also looking at this case as far as what these women went through as far as other scientologists 
suppressing their allegations, telling them that they couldn't go to the police. I, I have to believe that the federal government is also paying a close attention. And I think there may be other consequences for the church. So this is this is really a dire moment for the church of Scientology, in my opinion. So did the women give specifics as to why they were terrified of the church? Did they say what could possibly happen to them? Absolutely. Uh, you know, Jane Doe, number one, for example, uh, gave amazing testimony about the violent rape she had been through and that she went to the church. And, you know, the church has rules. You're not supposed to turn in one Scientologist. Uh, one Scientologist is not supposed to go to the police about another Scientologist. And she knew that. She went to the church. You know what the church did? They put her through three months of past life counseling where she had to spend three months exploring her past lives going back millions of years mm -hmm. to try to figure out what evil things she had done in the past that made her a victim in this lifetime and charged her $15,000 for it. This is how they drill into your head that you better not go to the police or because the, the church owns you. Now, what are the consequences? She was she knew the consequences. If she did go to the police, if she uh you know publicly accused Danny Masterson, they do what's called declare you a suppressive person, declare you an SP. You are kicked out of the church. And here's the thing: any Scientologist that wants to avoid the same fate has to also cut uh, completely cut off ties with you. She would lose her family. She would lose her friends. She would lose any uh, opportunity for working in that field anymore. They knew this, and they talked about this on the stand in, co in court, saying that they knew that they couldn't come forward because it would cost them their lives, essentially. And the judge, I think the judge was very persuaded by this. I, she actually said something when she announced her decision that she was bound uh, binding over um, – um, Madison for trial and that he would face trial. She not only said that the women had testified that they were um, subjected to sexual attacks with, with no consent, but also she said something about that Scientology's policies explain why they had not come forward sooner. So it's all this stuff is really going to get examined closely by the media that covers that case. Did the other two women have similar stories? Have they tried to report it? Yeah, they, they also talked about how they were terrified, and they knew that if they went to the police, they would be declared. They testified that as well. Wow. So Danny Masterson then, uh, Tom Cruise, John Travolta, like Scientology's got so much invested in their reputations to enhance their own brand, why did these guys get involved with Scientology in the first place? It's a great question. It's a great question. Uh, well, let's 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 put let's make one thing perfectly clear. They don't have very many celebrities. I, I I run into journalists that say, "Why does Scientology have so many celebrities?" They have a few. Okay, uh, and you nailed it. Tom Cruise, John Travolta, Kirstie Alley, Jenna Elfman, a few others. Um, why are they attracted to it? I mean, one of the reasons why I think celebrities and actors might be more susceptible than other people is that if you go to a church or a synagogue or a mosque, what happens? You sit in a group experience. There's somebody up at the pulpit who is explaining things and you're asked to believe and invest in some things that happened 2000 years ago in the Middle East or, you know, there's a story, a collective story. Everyone is asked to believe that has nothing to do with you. You weren't there you know, 2,000 years ago, but you're, it, 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 they then explain how that applies to your life and you're asked to invest in that. Scientology is nothing like that. You walk in and di from day one, it's all about you, 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 you. You sit down, not in a group, but with one other person, an auditor, and that auditor starts asking you about your life, your memories, what you went through as a child, what are your challenges in life? And not only is it all about your memories and who you are, they can never tell you you're wrong. So one of the things they want you to do is go back into previous lives and remember who you were a thousand years ago or 10 million years ago. And so a lot of these people will say, well, I think I was Julius Caesar or, or I think I was Jesus Christ. They can't tell you you're wrong. 
they just have to say, oh, that's interesting. That's great. We're going to write that down. So I think that focus, that it's very narcissistic. It's all about you. It's all about your learning who you, you're this super important figure in the galaxy's history and you've ruled over planets. And I think there are certain people that, that like that focus on themselves. And so I think maybe that's one of the reasons why actors get into it. Another reason is that they cater to celebrities. They, how many churches do you know have a celebrity center, right? And that's what Scientology has. They have a separate facility. And not only do they have a separate facility, but within that facility, they have a separate set of entrances and offices. So these folks never have to mingle with the, the rank and file, right? Tom Cruise has his own entrance into the place. He goes up his own elevator. They've got a separate place for him to get be pampered. And the other people have explained to me, like Jason Begay, who was a celebrity in the church, that they make it feel like they've got your back. You know, if you get into some legal trouble or if you get into some kind of a squabble, Scientology sends attorneys, Scientology sends, you know, staff. So it's that catering to them, uh, pampering of them, but also I think the complete focus on who they are and you're never told you're wrong. All these things, I think, all these things have added up to they've been able to get in a few celebrities. But, you know, people ask me, so why don't they leave? If, if there are all these abuses and controversies in Scientology, why doesn't Tom Cruise believe? And the tabloids want you to believe. I mean, every six months, another tabloid says, Tom's leaving. Tom's going back to Katie, all this garbage. What, you know, people ask me, well, do they stay in because they've got all this blackmail material? And there's no question when you're sitting there talking about yourself and revealing all your secrets, they are writing it down. They are producing files on you. There's no question they have a lot of material on these guys. But I think it's important to keep in mind that Travolta and Cruz, they're true believers. They really do believe that L. Ron Hubbard, a mid-century science fiction writer from the 50s, discovered the secrets of the universe and only L. Ron Hubbard and that, that we are living on a prison planet and most of us, you know, non-Scientologists have no idea what's really going on. And so, you know, people ask me, Tony, how can Tom Cruise believe something so crazy? And my answer is all, always, you got to keep this in mind. He wonders how you can't believe it. How can you not see that Scientology is the only salvation for this planet, this prison planet being run by evil invader forces? We can only fight them back with Scientology. So... Once you buy into an idea like that, that you've lived for trillions of years and you'll continue to live for trillions of years, uh, it's a very powerful idea. And as Paul Haggis described in the movie Going Clear, when people criticize you for it, it just makes you hold on to it stronger. You know what I'm saying? It's, it, it, they dig in even deeper. So I think for people like Cruz and Travolta in particular, it's their way of life and that's how they see the world. Have you heard anything about this slave labor force that tom cruise has got through scientology these people work for free and do all this do his bidding yeah so there's various groups inside scientology the largest group are what's called the publics these are people that are just paying for courses they have their regular lives outside the church then there are people who actually work for scientology some of them are called staff they're the folks that work at your local facility the local org and they're making like minimum wage and they have really long hours but then there's the inner hardcore of scientology these are called the c organization because it actually started uh in 1967 when they were sh on a ship and so they called themselves the c organization and they're still called the c org today and they still have naval uniforms and naval ranks even though they're working on secret bases in the desert you know uh the sea org requires a billion year contract and no i did not say that incorrectly a billion year contract you are signing promising to come back lifetime after lifetime they work 365 days a year for about 40 cents an hour and this includes children laura mm -hmm. decrescenzo sued the church of scientology in 2009 and in her claim she said that she joined the sea org at 12 and she was put on the child's schedule, which was 90 hours a week. When she turned 13, she was put on the adult schedule, which is 112 hours a week. She was punished because she admitted to missing her mother. All right, this is what it's like in the C organization. Now, they've a lot of that's been revealed in recent years. 
Scientology claims it no longer has kids that young in the Sea Org. But the number one thing you always have to keep in, in mind about Scientology is they never tell the truth. Their, their spokespeople have never told the truth ever. So I don't believe them that they say that they don't have children in the Sea Org anymore. Uh, but even the adults that are in the Sea Org are working insane hours for almost no pay. And um, there's been a lot of abuses. There was an FBI investigation about all this, actually, in 2009, 2010. And they interviewed uh, the Sea Org members. I've actually posted the material from that FBI investigation on my website. Why the FBI, or why the Department of Justice didn't file charges, that's a very complex, long story. But at least we have that material, amazing testimony from these people and the, the hardships they were put through as they served their billion years. So one of our guests alleged that it was Tom Cruise's wife was against the church and he temporarily broke away from it. But then the church allegedly plotted to get her out of the way and he came back. Have you heard anything about that? Well, sure. I mean, I've written extensively about Tom's three marriages and, and how Scientology was involved in all of them. He actually was all first of them. Married. Oh, yeah. He was he was first married to Mimi Rogers, who was a Scientologist. She got him into Scientology. They were actually married on May 7th. 1987, May 9th, sorry, May 9th, 1987, which is Dianetics Day. It's a very important day on the Scientology calendar. So by then, she had already gotten him well into it. Three years later, Scientology broke up that marriage because they wanted him to get together with Nicole. Scientology was very much involved in that. I've got a complete story about that with people who were there at the time. When he married Nicole in 1990, she did her best to, to be part of Scientology with him. And I've actually talked to her auditor, right? The guy that was counseling her. And she got all the way to OT2 in only two years. So she must, Nicole Kidman must, from between 1990 and 1992, she must have done Scientology virtually every day. She was doing her best. But then after she got to OT2, after 1992, she pulled away. And I, I think, I think like some others, she soured on the leader, David Miscavige. I think she got tired of him. She pulled away from Scientology in 1992. And she pulled Tom away with her. Now, none of us realize this until years later. But between 1992 and 2000, when they broke up, Tom was pretty much away from Scientology completely. Like when he was filming, when they were filming Eyes Wide Shut with Stanley Kubrick in 96, I think it was, Miscavige was going crazy trying to get information on them. I actually wrote a, a story about the spy that, that David Miscavige had in Tom's household to keep tabs on him during this period. In 2000, they broke up, and then David Miscavige made it job one in Scientology. We got to get Tom back in, and we got to get him spun up and gung ho again. And that's what they did between 2000 and 2003. Was um, Marty Rathman was his auditor? They worked very hard on him, and by 2003, Tom Cruise was number one Scientologist in the world, and he was anxious at that time to kind of go out and be the ambassador for Scientology. They tried it out in July 2003. They had him at the grand opening of a facility in Missouri, of all places, uh, for Applied Scholastics, which is one of their front groups that tries to get L. Ron Hubbard's materials into schools, into public schools. And Tom Cruise is there at the opening of that building in 2003. Then um, they used him to open a, what's called an ideal org the following year in Madrid, Spain. It's you know, since 2003, David Miscavige has owned, uh, opened like 60 of these things. He's basically turned normal orgs into these elaborate cathedrals at millions and millions of dollars. And he's done it like 60 times around the world. The only time Tom Cruise went to one, it was Madrid in 2004. And he actually gave a speech in Spanish. My website's the only one that has published that Tom Cruise speaking in Spanish to open that org. He had just broken up with Penelope Cruz. And reportedly at that event, he told David Miscavige that he needed a new girlfriend. And so that's what started that summer of 2004 is when Dave and Shelley, his wife, Shelley, started a program to audition actresses that they thought they were auditioning for a movie. They were auditioning to be Tom's girlfriend. And by November 2004, they had chosen a young Scientologist actress by the name of Nazanin Boniati. This is all, uh, Alex Gibney does a great job with this in his movie Going Clear on HBO. And from November 2004 to January 2005, Nazanin was dating Tom Cruise after she'd been selected in that process. And uh, and that's 
Um, also, just before that, in October 2004, is when Tom wanted uh, David Miscavige wanted to recognize Tom for what an amazing Scientologist he was now. That's when he gave him that big medal you've probably seen. In October 2004, he gave him the Freedom Medal of Valor, which is this larger version of a medal that other Scientologists get. And video of that event was leaked four years later uh, in 2008. And that's when we get that black turtleneck interview of Tom Cruise that's so fun to watch. They made that thinking it was only going to be seen by other Scientologists. And they wanted to show everybody how Tom Cruise was the most enthusiastic, gung-ho Scientologist in the world. And that's why he looks so crazy in that video. Wow, this is absolutely fascinating. So they have now got a stronghold in Clearwater, Florida, where David Miscavige lives, and also Cruise has built a penthouse condo there. Yeah, uh, a few years ago, I broke the news that uh, Tom was building a condo there. Uh, he actually, uh, a Scientologist, a wealthy Scientologist had purchased a, a former bank building and was, was rehabbing it with condos. It's right in the middle of the, what they call their spiritual Mecca. There the flag land base, just a five minute walk where, from where uh, David Miscavige is. And Tom had bought the top two floors to make a double penthouse. He had also purchased, um, they were building him a 12 car garage with an air bridge and a car elevator. So when Tom drives in, he goes into the car elevator. It brings his car up to his 12-car garage. He walks across the air bridge and right up to his penthouse apartment. He never has to see anybody. He never has to come out on the street. They have designed it perfectly for him. He may make trips to Clearwater. We might not even know it. Um, yeah, and that's just a few minutes from David Miscavige. Miscavige himself, he was, all, he was based in California forever. And we were surprised to learn that he's now is you know based out of that same area. He's in the flag building, I think, at the at Clearwater. I think what's happening, Sean, is Scientology's really had a tough 20 years. They've lost a lot of people. The pandemic, pandemic has very been very difficult on them. I think they're circling the wagons. I think Miscavige is consolidating the power, even though he puts on a show that Scientology is expanding and it's all over the world, and it's in South Africa and Taiwan and Mexico. They're really concentrating their power in that little town of Clearwater, Florida, and they know that they need to like build up kind of a fortress there. Good grief. So is Tom Cruise with a woman now that was vetted by Scientology? I, you know what? I don't I, I haven't seen that he's dating anybody. Uh, that's a good question. Um, I have a great source who, who, who worked in his household for years and years. And that source tells me that, um, one of the things about Tom Cruise is he has to be with somebody, uh, he, because he not, when he's with, whether it's, you know, Nicole Kidman or, or Katie Holmes, he's really like obsessed with them. Well, you saw it a little bit on Oprah's couch, right? I mean, his, his whole life is around that. And he's, he's got the, everyone who's met him will tell you. He's got the energy of a small city, right? I mean, the guy is just always on and he's in this woman's face. So, you you know, if you're going to date Tom Cruise, you better be prepared. He's going to be all over you all day, every day. So my source was saying, I don't understand how he can go this long without a serious girlfriend like that because he, he normally needs that really tight partner. So I'm not sure what's going on with him. Uh, I, I, you know, a guy like him could probably date somebody secretly. I'm sure the tabloids will know before me if he's seeing somebody, but um, I mean, you know, his uh, most recent co-star in the new Mission Impossible they've been talking about. It's hard to know what's going on with him at this point and why he's not publicly with somebody. Perhaps age has tempered his testosterone. I don't know. <laughs> he looks good. I mean, come on. Yeah, the guy, looks, the guy looks very yeah. good. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so we've got about five minutes left, and. Um, is there anything you would like to cover in that last five minutes then? Well, I, you know, I just encourage people to come by TonyOrtega.org because we've got a, the underground bunker because we've got a new story every day. Um, there's uh, a lot of different things going on with court cases. There's a case at the U.S. Supreme Court right now. There's a case at the California Supreme Court. There's Danny Masterson's criminal case coming up. Um, and, and the question is always, well, when is the federal government going to step in and do something? Because... You know, they Scientology, the reason why Scientology never gets investigated for these abuses and controversies is because they have tax exempt status. And, you know, when is the government going to 
you know, reinvestigate that. And it's hard to know. The, the IRS has been decimated in recent years, and I'm not sure they have the personnel yet to go after that. But, you know, I think something like the Danny Masterson case and some of the abuses people are going to see uh, of these women and and some of the control in that organization, I think, will have an effect. I also know that the federal government is looking at some financial crimes. Uh, I've written about some older people who were just horribly extorted by Scientology. And um, I know they've talked to federal investigators. So. You know, it's a small organization. It's got some famous names, but I think it is worthwhile for the government to take a look at them and and see the ways that they are violating their taxes and status. You got a question from one of the viewers, Sarah, who's asked, I wonder, the way they extort non-celebrities, is it the same for celebrities? I imagine it's completely different. I, I think it's different, but I think that celebrities are under pressure to to uh, donate. I think pres- uh, celebrities are under pressure. What I remember when Leah Remini's show started, uh, and which was such a great run. I mean, she did three years of amazing exposés on Scientology. When that show first started, all of a sudden, Kirstie Alley, Kelly Preston, so sad, Kelly, she's gone, and Nancy Cartwright all finished OT8, OT7, OT8 within a few months of each other. These are the highest levels that you, in Scientology, you have to go through increasingly expensive levels over years and years up to the, when you're near the top, near OT7 or OT8, you're spending hundreds of dollars an hour for this counseling. And it can take many years to complete. And I noticed that all three of these celebrities all finished and then made a show of it. That was the other thing. They really made a show. And I said, you know, you know what's going on is David Miscavige is putting pressure on them. I need you to make a show because he was worried about the impact that that Leah Remini's show was happening. happening. So I think that does occur. I think the celebrities get pressured to either um, say something publicly or finish the, or do more courses. Uh, I think they're under pressure to donate money. Leah Remini has talked about that, that she was under a lot of pressure to donate money. Another thing to keep, another answer to that question is when Leah asked the question she wasn't supposed to ask, this was at Tom Cruise's and Katie's Holmes wedding in Italy in November 2006. They were married in a castle. Um, she, Leah went was an invited guest, and she realized that David Miscavige, the leader of the church, was there without his wife, Shelley. How could he be there at the wedding of the century without his wife? Where was she? And Leah dared to go up to Tommy Davis, who at that time was Miscavige's sort of you know major domo, and ask him, hey, what's going on? Where's Shelley? And she was told she didn't have the effing rank to ask that question when she got when after she left that wedding went back to the united states she was ordered to the flag land base in clearwater florida and she went through three months of intense interrogations and her bill was three hundred thousand dollars holy shit because oh, she my- dared to ask that question so when you ask me do the celebrities go through the same kind of extortion and the same side of pressure yes they do it's even bigger bigger money at stake all right tony thank you you're a brilliant speaker i really appreciate you coming on would love to have you back on and i urge people to go down if you're watching this on any of the platforms and click on tony's links and support his important work so you have a great rest of your day my friend thank you for having me on sean it's been a lot of fun thanks tony cheers bye